This set of videos covers the Composite Stress Toolbox integrated directly in the Composite Browser. I can run uh, various Stress Toolbox calcs on materials, plies, laminates, and zones or elements. I can directly determine uh, engineering constants from any of these entities and see what those engineering constants look like as I do, for example, an angle sweep. And I can additionally uh, determine various load response and strength calculations by inputting plate loads and first ply failure criteria into the uh, stress toolbox calc. So we'll take a look at all of these uh, outputs, engineering constants, load response, and strength in the next videos. This video covers engineering constants with the composite stress toolbox. In HyperMesh, I will begin by opening an example model here. I'll grab hat complete out of the composite stress toolbox folder. And I will open the composite browser. I can access engineering constants on all of the materials, plies, laminates, and zones or elements within a laminate. I can access these results in one of two ways. The first is on the fly. I can select any one of my materials or more, right click and go to analyze engineering constants. This will pull up this UI with uh, various engineering constant data, thermal expansion uh, coefficient data, and so forth. If I come over to the result type, I can also use a uh, plot to view what these properties would look like uh, for this material as I rotated through a sweep of angles. Similarly, I can apply this calculation to one or more plies. And again, I can run a, a sweep of the stiffnesses as well. We can see we're offset at 45 degrees for this selected ply because the orientation of the ply is at 45 degrees. If I run the calc on uh, a laminate directly, if the laminate's fully defined, in other words, all plies within the laminate have a shape, this calculation will apply on any zones of constant uh, stacking sequence in the laminate. In this example, we have two zones, so I get results for both. If one or more plies uh, within a laminate do not have shape, the laminate's not fully defined, and I would only get results for my full stack as shown in the browser. And the output here, I get my ABD matrices, I get engineering constants, for in-plane bending and zero curvature uh, results. And again, I can come to my plot screen here and look at any uh, stiffnesses rotated. If I wanted to access results for a specific zone in my model, I can do that by coming to the zone view of the composite browser expanding my laminate, I'll get a list of any zones in the model. I can also plot the uh, colors on the screen here to see which is which. And if I choose one or more of these, I can run an engineering constant analysis here as well. And this is all exactly the same information as we looked at on the laminate. These results were all accessed uh, on the fly by directly clicking on entities. If I wanted something a little bit more permanent that stuck around in the database, I can do that by creating an analysis. My type is engineering constants. I'll navigate to the type that I'm interested, for example, a laminate. I'll select my laminate. And then here I simply need to click run.
This video covers load response calculations. To define a load response, I can create an analysis. And under type, I will select load response. There are a couple options available for the entity type we want to apply this load response on. I can select from laminates or elements. We'll begin with laminates. For my plate loads, I can either uh, pull these from a result file or I can manually define them. And we'll start by manually defining them. Uh, when I create plate loads, usually I'll come back to the model browser and just provide a load collector that they can live in. This is purely organizational. My plate loads collector is current. So back in the composite browser, I can right click create a uh, plate load here. I have the option to specify this as a list of forces and moments, strains and curvatures or homogenized stresses. I'll use forces and moments and input something like an NX of a thousand Newtons. Back in my analysis setup, I can point to that load under the plate load. And that selects all the loads in the collector. Optionally, though, I can go uh, by list instead. And that allows me to just select that single uh, created load. Finally, I need to point to a first ply failure uh, list. And I can do that by first creating one using first ply failure method. Result type I can leave default, doesn't make any change when we're uh, running an analysis in the composite browser. I can choose from factors of safety, uh, indexes, or a margin of safety, which I'll use. And then I can assign any of my materials to one or more uh, common first ply failure theories. I'll go ahead and use just a max strain for both my materials. And if I come over to my materials, we can see that I have a one direction tension and compression allowable set as well as two direction tension and compression allowables. Finally, I will assign that to my analysis. And with that, I can run it here. And now that I have results, because I'm pointing to a laminate, and the laminate's fully defined, I get uh, results for each zone in the laminate, of which there are two for this example. I get a printout of my laminate data, so the stacking sequence of each zone, a list of load data, laminate midplane results, and if I keep scrolling down, I can see my laminate stresses and strains for each ply. Keep going, principal results, uh, invariant results of J1 and J2. And finally, uh, first ply failure results, which uh, are looping through the list of first ply failure criteria I selected and choosing the uh, critical one for each ply. In this case, I only have max strain selected and that's uh, the result I see here. If I come to the result type, I can also uh, plot this data through thickness for any of my zones. So if I choose something like a mechanical stress here, I get a through thickness plot. And if I hover over any of these plies, these bar chart uh, inputs represent each ply, I can see the specific result at that ply. In that first example, we used a manually defined plate load. We can also use a solver data from an analysis. To do that, I will change my uh, entity type to an element instead. I can choose one or more. I'll 
choose something like that to begin with. And for my plate load here, I can still choose a manual input, but now I have the option to uh, refer to result subcases. To get results into HyperMesh, I can come to the post ribbon and add a result here. I'm in Optistruct, I solve this uh, and output an H3D. I'll go ahead and select that here in the composite stress box toolbox folder and open. Once it's open, we can see that result came in. And if I'm going to refer to a, a result file for any stress toolbox calcs, when I uh, run that model, I need to make sure that I'm requesting my element forces. Uh, I can do that as an input to the solve using an output request. This one's global. And I am requesting element forces on my H3D. I had already solved this model, but if you're uh, going to run some other model, make sure you have this result uh, selected before you try any stress toolbox calcs. Back in the composite browser, in my analysis, now I can choose a result subcase instead. And I only have a single subcase in that uh, H3D, which I'll select. I'll leave my first ply failure settings uh, the same. And at this point, I can run the calcs on that element for that subcase, and I'll get all the same printouts as before. Note you can do a few elements at a time. They'll all be listed here. Uh, but I don't suggest just selecting the whole model. A current development uh, will allow you to do that in the future and contour those results rather than getting a text printout. Once it's been run, we get all the same data uh, that we discussed previously. This video covers strength calculations. And this is basically the reverse of what we were doing previously with load response. Instead of subjecting a laminate to some known load and determining what our margins are. In this case, we are going to uh, choose a laminate, any failure criteria, and determine what the critical loads are for that failure criteria. To set this analysis up, I will create an analysis in the composite browser. For a type, I will choose strength. I'll point to my laminate again. You can optionally choose an element, one or more instead. And I'll create another first ply failure request uh, right here. And I'll use just a single max strain criteria, but I could use uh, more here. Note on both my materials, I do have my tension and compression allowables in the one and two direction set. We'll go ahead and select that first ply failure request. And at this point, I can run the analysis. So here I'll get a critical load printout for forces, moments, in plane and out of plane stresses, and so forth. 